What's happening guys? Welcome to the channel. This is Living in Alberta and today we're going to do our yearly recap. We're going to take a look at the cost of living heading into 2024 in Red Deer, Alberta. All right, let's not waste any time. Let's get right into it. Let's take a look at the biggest thing that people consider when they're moving somewhere. Let's take a look at the cost of buying a home. So in 2022, Red Deer's median detached price was $370,000. Pretty darn affordable. Fast forward all the way through 2023, the median detached price in Red Deer is now $380,000. So you saw a $10,000 jump or a 2.7% increase. So you can see here that the market is competitive. You are seeing appreciation in prices, but it's not super insane and crazy like some other markets like Calgary, for example. Now, what are my predictions for 2024? I think that the real estate market here in Red Deer and Central Alberta is going to get even more tight, even more competitive. So right now we are at just over 2.08 months of inventory, which is a seller's market. Anything under two and a half months is a seller's market. Now, what you're seeing finally is that these interest rates are going to start coming down. And by mid 2024, you're going to see them come down quite a bit, which is going to bring all those people who've been sitting on the sidelines for the last couple of years waiting to see what interest rates are going to do. That's going to bring them back into the market. Now, talking with some of my mortgage broker friends who are much smarter in this area than I am, you're going to really see those rates come down. They're expecting or predicting through 2024 a 1.5% decrease in the interest rates. And by 2025, get this, you might see interest rates as low as 3.45%. So this is much better than it is right now. At the beginning of the year, people were getting six and a half. This is really going to stir up the pot in the real estate market. It is going to get super competitive, sorry, even more competitive than it already is. And you're gonna see a really tight market for the next couple of years. Now, some of the reasons why you're seeing the real estate market in Alberta here appreciates as much as it is, is because one, there's so many people moving here. Tons and tons of people are making the move to Alberta for a number of reasons, for cost of living due to politics or whatever it is. I think it was from October of 2022 to November of 2023 or October of 2023, there was 169,000 people that made the move to Alberta. And so this is also not only affecting homes, but this is affecting the rental market as well. You're really seeing that rental market increase faster than it has in a really long time. And Red Deer has always been known for having super cheap rents. It was at one point, a couple of years ago, when I first started making these videos, it was the most affordable rental market in the country, when one of the only places where you could still find a two bedroom for under $1,000. Are you kidding me? No, I'm not kidding you. But if we fast forward to where we are now, Red Deer is super affordable still. It's still ranked 32 out of 35 cities that were in this statistical analysis done for rental markets. But the average or median rents have increased quite a bit here. We've seen a 17% increase from last year. The only places that are cheaper in the country than Red Deer are Fort Mac, Regina, and Saskatoon, but hey, who wants to live in those places? But anyways, let's get into the numbers. The cost to rent a one-bedroom apartment here in Red Deer is $1,249, and a two-bedroom is $1,469. So you can see it's still very affordable, but it has gone up quite a bit from what it was. Now, with this interest environment that we've had for the last year or two, this is a big reason why you've seen those rental prices come up so much. One, it's also a supply and demand thing. There's so many people moving here, there's not enough places for people to rent. Supply and demand, prices go up, but also because those interest rates are rising, landlords <laughs> look at it like a numbers job. They don't wanna pay anything extra, they still want their properties to cash flow. So guess what, even though you're still a renter, you're still paying interest rates. You're paying that landlord's interest rate instead of your own on your own home. That's a pretty smart move there, Head Ranger Joe. And cutting in real quick for a reminder, guys, I am a licensed realtor in the province. You can use this info popping up, give it a screenshot, do whatever you need to do, get a hold of me any way you want. We'd love to hear from you. All right, let's get back to the video. Now, with these interest rates coming down a little bit, you might see a little bit of ease in the rental market. It's kind of hard to predict though, because again, the economy here in Alberta is very busy. Lots of people are moving here for work and cost of living and all the other things. But 
with those interest rates going down, there's going to be a lot more people looking to buy houses again because they're going to be able to afford when they couldn't afford something in the higher interest market. All right, let's talk about utilities here in Alberta. This has been a hot topic over the last little while. Now, remember, if you're coming from British Columbia, or Ontario, you have options here. It's not regulated, so you can choose your provider. Some of the more popular places are Nmax, Adco, Direct Energy. These are some of the most popular places to pick from. But when you do get here, there's always kind of a discrepancy. Some people end up paying a lot more than where they came from, but those who did their homework and were able to lock in at a good rate, they end up paying about the same, or sometimes it's even a little bit less. Now I bring this up all the time because this site is super handy. You definitely want to check this site out. Go to ucahelps.alberta.ca, go to their cost comparison tool, put in your postal code, and it'll give you all the providers and you can compare rates and find the best deal for you guys. So do make sure you shop around and a little tidbit, it's called electricity here. It is not called hydro. You might get some funny looks if you're talking about a hydro bill when you're referring to electricity. So just keep that in mind. It's electricity, it's not hydro. This is what we used to call a small hydro. And that line is electricity. Now again, this can vary so, so much depending on how big your house is, how old it is. I, for example, I keep the heat on in my garage because it's been super cold outside. This last weekend, I've never seen temperatures this low. So we've been having the nicest winter that I've ever seen here in my lifetime in Alberta. And then last week, I witnessed the coldest temperature that I've ever seen. So on Saturday night with the wind chill, it was minus 57. Now that is super, super cold. This whole last week, it's been minus 40 to minus 50. So ridiculously cold temperatures. So if you're running that furnace nonstop, like we are now, if you're heating your garage because you love your dogs and you want to keep them warm, obviously your bill is going to be a little bit more. But a good ballpark range is you're going to pay anywhere from $300 to $450 a month, depending on what season we're in. We'll just pick the worst case scenario here. And then you're going to add another $100 to $110 or so for your water, wastewater, and waste collection, which will come through the city of Red Deer. So again, utilities are kind of a mixed bag. For some reason, we're seeing lots of fees lately. And I'm sure good old Trudy's carbon tax isn't helping anything. We're seeing that on the bill now too. But remember, do your homework. You have options. It's not regulated here. Use that site that I just told you about. Make sure you shop around and lock in at a good rate for the next few years. All right, let's talk about taxes. We'll kind of talk about Alberta's provincial taxes, and then we'll talk about the other taxes that you're going to be saving here in Alberta. Now, in Alberta, it is. it depends on where you fall in the income bracket. So a lot, uh, everyone likes to say that Alberta is going to be way cheaper, but there are some mid-range brackets. I'm not exactly sure. I haven't done the calculations, but you were going to pay less tax in places like Ontario, British Columbia, where Alberta shines in its taxes in the inc provincial income tax anyways, is for low income earners. Alberta has the largest personal tax exemption up to $21,000. So you will pay zero tax on your first $21,000. The beautiful part about it is all of this money is tax exempt. And as you earn more, it starts to benefit high income earners. But from 21,000 all the way up to just over 142,000, you play a flat 10% tax. And then as we start to get over that, you start to see a little bit more benefits. But it's not always what people say. Again, there are some mid-range incomes where you will pay less taxes in other provinces. Now let's talk about where we really save here in Alberta. We talk about provincial sales tax. This is a big one here in Alberta. And I figure, you know, when I'm making these videos that people just know this by now, but a lot of people don't. So you are only paying 5% GST here. There is no provincial sales tax, which can be huge. So if we compare Alberta to BC and Ontario, and we make these comparisons a lot right now because those people from those provinces are making the move here. Alberta is only 5% GST. BC is 12% with the provincial sales tax. And then Ontario is 13%. So when you are looking at some big ticket items, this makes a big, big difference. It's kind of nice to be able to look at the price of something, even if it's something as minor as going for dinner and that price that you see there is pretty much the price that you're going to pay. And when we start looking at bigger ticket items like vehicles and you know buying like a brand new quad or a UTV or something, not paying that extra provincial sales tax is going to be huge. Now, some other benefits of moving here, again, I always take this for granted, but there is no land transfer tax in Alberta. You do not pay any land transfer tax whatsoever. Well, what are we waiting for? Now we can buy the house. $10,000.
up. So you can save thousands in depending on the price your house, even maybe $10,000 or more by not paying this land transfer tax. Now there is no healthcare premiums here either. There is no payroll tax. Now, if we take a quick look at the property taxes here in Red Deer, it actually has come down a little bit. Last year was 0.99%. This year it's down to 0.98%. So on a $500,000 home, you're going to pay roughly $4,900 per year for property taxes. All right, let's move on to some odds and ends here. Let's take a look at some things that I think are kind of important. Now, I'm not gonna talk about groceries and stuff like that. I don't think anybody cares. I'm gonna save 50 cents on a jug of milk or if a steak or a loaf of bread is cheaper. Some things are gonna be cheaper in Alberta. Some things are gonna be cheaper and more expensive in other provinces. People don't get up and move across the country because they're gonna save a few bucks on groceries. Now, let's talk about some of the things that I do think are a little bit important. Number one being gas. Now, Alberta, we're a little bit spoiled here. We always seem to have the cheapest gas prices in the country. Right now, at the time of making this video in Red Deer, the average gas price is $1.17.9. And if you're willing to brave the lineups at Costco, you can find gas for $1.99. Now, I had a someone give me a pro tip. They said, if you're willing to go a little bit later, around 8.30, the lineups there are actually next to nothing. So that is a good time to go. Oh, really? Because it's, it's low 40s here. Wait, what are you talking about? Costco always has the cheaper gas prices. So in my opinion, this is huge. If you do lots of traveling, I myself, I travel all around Red Deer, all around Central Alberta, down to Calgary, up to Edmonton. I use a lot of gas and this is a huge savings for me every single month compared to living somewhere else in a different province. Now, something I get asked about all the time here in Red Deer is the cost of internet, surprisingly. So we have two providers here in Alberta. I'm not sure if it's the same for the rest of the country, but here in Alberta, we have Shaw and we have Telus. And there can be resellers who can purchase the same product from Shaw and Telus and then resell it back to you at a cheaper discount because of their business model and how they just structure everything. Some of those are tech savvy and light speed internet. I've never used either of them, but sometimes the customer support can be a little bit lacking. I don't know, I think that's a matter of opinion. I heard tech savvy is really good. But again, Shaw and Telus, they are the providers here and it seems to average anywhere for high speed internet, you're gonna look at 70 to $80 a month. Now, one pro tip here, if you have been a customer for a long time, I know this happened to me when I lived in the city, I phoned and I was gonna go somewhere else and all of a sudden they gave me a discount or a reduced rate. So I'm not sure why they don't treat their long-term customers a little bit better but if you phone and actually say that you're going to break up and go somewhere else you can get a better deal from these places so a little bit of a pro tip there but if you're looking for the creme de the crop the best of the best go straight with Shar, go straight with Telus. They are the ones to go to here. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Again, I didn't want to get in too far into the minor details of things like groceries and stuff that don't really matter. We really wanted to hit on the big stuff here. So if you did like the video, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, and click the notification bell so you're notified every week when a new video comes out. And if you would like any help with the real estate needs, give me a shout, use this info popping up, screenshot it, do whatever you need to. We'd love to hear from you. All right, I'll see you guys next week. Cheers.